Technology is ruining your kid's brain and even hijacking your little human. Did you know that technology is as addicting as cocaine? Now listen, the only thing that should be that addicting is our channel, Mended Light. But in all seriousness, there isn't a single credible study that shows a child exposed to more tech earlier in life has increased intelligence or aptitude than a tech-free kid. Stick with me and by the end of this video, you will know how to recognize the signs of tech or electronic addiction and I'll even share some solutions so that you and your family can enjoy each other without having to gather together to watch TV or play video games. Yes, it is possible. Excessive screen exposure can damage your child's brain. Okay, stay with me on this. Through neuroimaging, right, taking pictures of the brain, we have seen that a picture of a kid's brain on tech, excessive tech, mind you, is the same as a kid's brain on cocaine. Technology is that addictive. Okay, so before you think I'm crazy, like I understand, I get it. I have five kids from six to 16. We live in a world of tech and tech is a beautiful thing. It allows us to do so much with our lives and to accomplish so much. But here's what I tell my kids. It's like ice cream. Is there anything wrong with ice cream? No, of course not. I love ice cream. I almost wanna eat it on a daily basis. And when I was a teenager, I did, okay? Don't judge me. But if I was to eat ice cream, every day of my life, for most of my, my meals, what would that do to my health? It's the same thing with tech. It has a place in our life. It has a fun place in our life, but it's got to stay in a safe place. It can't go into a place of excessive use. Statistically speaking, children ages eight to 15 years old are spending seven and a half hours a day in front of screens. So there's a couple of really great books out there. One is called Glow Kids. The other is called Resetting Your Child's Brain. There are great studies about how tech is affecting our kids, affecting their emotional, cognitive, mental development, their ability to grow into happy, healthy adults. But here's what we know from the neuroimaging or taking pictures of brains that are looking at glowing screens. The glowing screens stimulate the brain's pleasure center, known as the amygdala, and it increases the dopamine. That's the brain's primary feel-good hormone. And here's the thing, it does that as much as sex does. We're gonna call this a brain orgasm. And this brain orgasm is so addictive for adults, but even more so for children whose brains are still developing. There is a strong correlation between screen addiction and mental health challenges, such as anxiety, depression, ADHD, addiction, increased aggression, and even in extreme cases, psychosis. So here's the thing. We want dopamine in our lives. It's a good thing, but what we want is natural dopamine activities, and they require time and effort, such as learning a new skill or playing a sport or spending time with a loved one. The process for doing those types of activities is drastically different than tech. When I say tech, I'm talking about video games, computer games, social media, being on your smartphone, even texting, researching on the internet. All of these things are good and can make our life better. It's when these things become addicting. It's when these things take priority over other healthy relationships in our lives, other healthy interests. What are some of the signs of tech or electronic addiction? Let me ask you some questions. Is someone you love struggling with emotional learning, sensory, or behavioral issues? Do you feel like you're walking on eggshells around them? Does the littlest thing set them off? Does your loved one seem to be wired and tired? They're revved up but exhausted at the same time? Have they lost interest in screen-free activities or a natural curiosity for learning? For a child, this last one is especially true. Do they have a hard time making eye contact? Okay, so I'm gonna quote a doctor here. Their name's Dr. Dunkley, and they have studied tech addiction at length. And they put it in a great way about how tech addiction mimics a wide variety of psychiatric, neurological, and behavioral disorders. What does that all mean? Now, there are dozens that I could list, but here's just a few. 
irritability, anxiety, OCD, panic attacks, depression, decreased empathy, having challenges with attachment, and even ADHD. Here's the thing, why does tech addiction show up this way? Why does it affect the brain the way it does? Well, here's just a brief explanation. The left brain is literal and it's information focused. The right brain is creative and abstract. And what happens with tech is it in general stimulates and overstimulates the left brain while understimulating the right brain, which causes the entire nervous system to become fragmented and dysregulated and disconnected. The child's brain becomes disorganized and they have a harder time following routines or focusing. It puts their brain in a place of constant stress. When the nervous system is dysregulated, we need to stimulate the right brain to get back on track and even everything out. So that's what happens to the brain on too much tech. But here's the thing, I've got five kids. Tech does not affect my kids all the same way. I definitely have some children who are more sensitive to how much time they spend on screens. And that is challenging and that is hard. So what are some of the risk factors for tech addiction? First off, genetics. Some individuals are more susceptible to addictive behavior because of their genes. Addiction does have a hereditary aspect to it. If you need an escape, like let's be honest, not everybody's life is great. Some people grow up in really unhealthy environments and understandably, they need an escape, whether it's from abuse or trauma or neglect. If you're someone who has not grown up in a healthy, safe or environment, video games can be a welcomed outlet. If you have a lack of connection in your relationships, you can get that connection to some extent from a screen. In reality, the opposite of addiction isn't sobriety, it's connection. And what we need to heal those connections with addictive substances isn't to stop doing it. We need something else to connect to, something healthier, something more fulfilling. There are usually multiple factors at play when it comes to tech addiction, but the reality is it can only take one to tip the scale. Victoria Dunkley wrote a wonderful book called Reset Your Child's Brain but don't worry, this process works for any age. It's a four week process where the first week looks like planning and weeks two through four are an electronic fast. And that is what it sounds like. So what does the planning process look like? So you need to create a plan. Like you're gonna make a life shift for a while and probably the first few days or the first week, there's gonna be some pushback and there might be some unhappy people in your life but here are some keys to make it successful. Create a plan, communicate to the entire family what's going on, get everybody on board. There may be one member of your family that needs it the most, but everybody needs to buy in and be on board. And then prepare. So currently electronics might take up as much as, as seven and a half hours of your child's day. What are they gonna do with all that free time? And when we talk about pathways in the brain, like when they're bored, when they're hungry, when they're lonely, this is what they do, they turn to tech. So what are they going to do instead? And they're going to have to create new habits. So buy games, non-electronic games, board games, activities, balls, outside stuff, replace those with a healthier alternative. Plan family outings, plan things to do. Okay, last step, before you go into your electronic fast, you need to do an electronic sweep of your house. Devices are everywhere computers, laptops, iPads, old phones, right? You need to take them and hide them and put them away so they cannot be gotten into and support your child through these hard days. But I can tell you, if you will stick with this for just a week, you will see a difference in their emotional behavior. You will see a difference in their connection and you will see a difference and how they show up in their lives and really their overall happiness. So you're gonna to need to have this conversation with your children. Another conversation you might need to have with your kids is dating after divorce. And that's this video right here. So check it out. Thanks for sticking with me. And remember to keep shining. We need your light.